Whenever I go out for some woodland photography, there's always a few rules that I like to stick by. Number one is make sure that your car is worth less than your camera and big enough for you to sit in the back and load your film. You never know who's lurking in the bushes ready to trash your car while you're away taking photographs. Number two is to make sure the clothing you wear blends in with the environment and also protects you from the elements and the bush itself. Number three is always make sure that you've got a GPS tracker or your mobile phone with some GPS app so you don't get lost. Number four is always watch out for dog poo. Number five, always remember to take wire cutters with you. You never know when you'll need them. And number six is always stick to your tracks and never wander off into the wilderness. You never know what's in the bushes. So with all that out of the way, I'm ready to venture into these woods and take some amazing photographs with the Bronica ETRS. Ribs is back, a <laughs> roll of HP5. It was kindly sent to me by Gary Geezer on Instagram. Cheers, Gary. So I'm in this place, these woods. I've never been here before. In fact, I had to have a look at a map to try and see how I got here. Then I realized it's only about a 15 minute drive from where I live, but I've never been here before. So. Um, the weather's quite nice, it's quite kind, it's not bright, it's a light overcast, a little tiny bit of blue up there, but um, you know, it's not gonna give me no harsh contrast or any crap like that while I'm walking through these woods. So, off I go, the Bonacre TRS, GoPro, you guys, me, let's see what we can find in these woods, come back with some amazing negatives to print later on in the dark room. I'm often going on about these walkaway shots, and if I was making a production on video or film for someone else, of course I'd be saying, let's get a few shots of you walking away and a few shots of you rumbling here and there from a distance. But we have to do it ourselves. And the GoPro's right back there. In fact, are these shots worth it? Let us know in the comments. So my first shot of the wood exploration that I'm about to embark on is going to be these leaves. I ain't got a clue what they're called, um, but I've seen them before in other prints. And a lot of times I've gone to the woods, these have all been a bit looking naff. These ones look like they've only just come out because we're in springtime or nearly summer here. So I'm going to do a quick incident reading. And while I'm doing that, I've got to mind that poo that's sitting about a foot away from me. Dog poo. So simple incident reading, back up here because my camera's going to come down here. 1 25th of a second, F11, lovely, all handheld stuff. I haven't got a tripod today, um, that's why I put a roll of 400 speed film inside the camera so I don't have to bring a tripod. I can do everything handheld and get as creative as I like in my hands rather than sticking it on a tripod and pulling out the cable release and stuff. So. Uh, Roll of Ilford HP 5 400 speed. This one's giving me 125th at F11. So I reckon most of my shots around here will be the same. It's up to me if I want to open up the aperture a little bit more to get a bit more creative, um, in which case then I'll just speed up the shutter speed. But uh, 125th F11, see what I can get. Just got to mind that dog poo. Done. So one thing about woodland photography that it's only in my mind really is you know really ropey looking woods i like everything to look nice and neat and pretty and a lot of the woods where i live um they just always seem to be rough crap all over the floor not rubbish but just you know just general woody stuff all over the floor but uh there's a little location up there i think i might like some nice tall trees without much leaf going on but i've got to try and get across this um, maybe I should have bought some sensible clobber. Bloody hell, that's slippery. Yes, did it. Oh, it's really muddy now. But I'm there, made it. 
sorted. Trainers are going to go in the wash later on. No problem. This looks nice. So I've just seen that little scene over there in between the trees and I'm still keeping everything simple with my incident reader. Now I'm in a bit more shade than I was earlier on. It's coming back at 5.6 at 1 25th of a second. So I need to go over there and measure the light actually. It's about 5.6 at uh, 1 25th of a second, I can still hold this quite steady at a 60th, so that'll give me F8, and that's what I'm gonna go for. So we come to F8, 1 60th of a second, let's do it. Just trying to look through a final composition in between those trees. I've got 15 shots, so plenty more to take. Done. Had to hold my breath there, one sixtieth of a second, but the camera's heavy enough, you know, to, to make it feel solid in your hands, so you're not gonna be shaking around. If I had the Olympus OM20 or one of those light 35 mil cameras, um, wouldn't have been stable enough, I don't think, but we'll soon see. This is another nice scene here, look. Uh, F8, 125th of a second. Let's have a go at that. Look at that, upturned tree. It's not worth taking a picture, but interesting, isn't it? Wow. I think the thing about woodland photography is just standing still. Instead of walking around too much, you know, plot up, stand still, have a good old look around. 360, you know. And you'll soon find something worth taking a picture of. It's when you rush about too much, um, you know, you can lose stuff. It's like when you're going for photo walks in the street, you're walking one way trying to find photographs, but sometimes you forget to just turn around and have a look back. And sometimes you see what you want. Can't see much here though. Bloody car in the woods. It's weird. I might be lost. Um, I think I might be lost again. I've, I've come off that track and I'm onto a different track, and there was a there's a car going by, and I, I don't get that at all. Um, oh bugger! Oh, I'm ages away from the car. I've come right off my track. <laughs> I've come right off the track and the car is like right over that way. Oh. No, which way's my car? Oh shit, no, my car's that way. If my car's that way, I can walk all the way along this track and come back on myself. That's coming out of the woods. We'll have to go cross country this way um, to get back where I was. I, I don't know if this is private land, but. Hopefully I can get I can get back through this way. Well, I'm at the boundary, but it's all bloody barbed wire. I can get through there, but there's a muddy old puddle down there. I reckon I can do it though. Oh god. Right, I can get through there. 
<laughs> At least I'll be back in the woods with that track. Ah. Oh, good job, I'm slim. <laughs> yes. And that, my silver loving friends, is how you get across a field through barbed wire. I'm a bit scratched up, but I'll oh, call. Cool. These are quite nice, these trees have got this moss growing up the side from the bottom, up the side of them. If I can only find a nice composition where it doesn't look as messy, a nice clean composition, that would look quite nice. I'll do alright. Be focusing when I'm using this camera, uh, today anyway, I've been doing quite a bit of zone focusing, so I've been setting the aperture and then looking at the focus ring and saying, okay, I want the tree to be within X amount of feet or the zone that I want to shoot, the focus zone to be X amount of feet and beyond that uh, a little tiny bit more. So I'm getting more sort of shallow depth of field in the foreground and in the background as well. So let's see if it works. Hear the cuckoo. So as I was walking off right behind me, um, in fact, it's, I was just shooting over there a minute ago, looking this way. I looked behind, and I just like the way this tree is sitting there, and these trees are coming off over the side where the wind's sort of battered them a little bit. It's, in fact, it's nearly gone. I think it's uh, resting on that other tree up there. That'd be a nice photograph to take. Just want to clean some of the ground up, though. It's a bit messy. Some people don't believe in. Uh, shifting stuff around when you take a shot but you know people have put that there not nature just cover it up with leaves a little bit and I'm glad I did that I've got logs in the background I'm going to remove them as well Done. We're on shot number nine, six to go. <laughs> now that is a camp. I reckon some kids have built that. That is awesome. I'd love to have hijacked that when I was a kid in the woods. Looks like I could protect you from the rain as well. Wicked. Good job, lads. Back on my phone again, trying to see where my car is, it reckons. Um, it's back that way. Oh man, this is not my idea of fun now, I'm trying to get out. Oh, it's, like, it's like walking the bloody Amazon. <laughs> Flies and crap everywhere. Oh dear. <sighs> I'm not lost. I've just lost the path. I've got to keep going this way, I think. My phone um, app reckons my car's over that way. This is a little tiny path, but over that way is proper um, messy. Follow me. I might have to go through that way. It's a shortcut, I think. Uh, ah! <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, oh dear, I need a machete. How the hell? How I manage up here? Oh, my legs are getting hurt now. <laughs> oh my god. 
this is where I get run over. Maybe not. Sweating like a racehorse. Ugh. Well, so I'm back for that shoot and I've just grabbed myself a nice Spitfire Amber Owl on this lovely Sunday afternoon while I'm going to do some developing. Bit of me time, you know, and you as well. So there's my camera, Veronica. I've got to get the film out and put it into that uh, developing tank. I've already rewound the film back. Let's have a look. Uh, there's the film. So we'll get that into the developing tank and uh, start our development. Right, I've got to get this film inside this tank. There's the reel there. Uh, so I get this film onto the tank and do my development. My development is going to be x toll and I'm cooking this at one part to one part x toll So there's my x toll there at 20 degrees. There's my stop bath, all nice and fresh, and there's my fixer, all nice and fresh as well. So I'm going to turn all these lights off, put this film on this reel, get it inside the tank, and uh, do my normal inversions and normal development. All right, so my film is now inside the tank. I've got my x toll there. Massive dev chart, I've gone with that. Uh, one part to one part, says so 12 minutes. So I'm going to go with that. Off we go. People develop differently. This is my normal way I develop. In goes the developer, no pre-wash. Put the lid on and then start my time. One, two, three, four, just five inversions to start. Little tap, done. And then I'll do one more, um, four inversions every minute on the minute after that. So around about 10 seconds of inversions every minute. Then after that, there'll be my stop bath, then me fixing the film, and then I'll be washing the film, getting it out to dry and then coming back in the dark room, seeing what we've got on the negatives and hopefully make a couple of nice prints. So as you noticed, I didn't put too much in the darkroom session for this video, I just showed you a few snippets. It's quite nice sometimes for me to just put the music on, have a Coke and a smile, and uh, make some prints, and that's exactly what I've done. I've come back with some really nice photographs here, which uh, you know makes it all better for getting lost. I come back with some nice negatives and some good prints as well, which I'll quickly go through and show you. 
So I only took three uh, negatives to make prints from. This was the first one, actually the first photograph that I took. That was of the leaves. I don't even know what they're called, but they're green and uh, they're leafy looking, so I'll call them leaves. <laughs> and, uh, I just like the way that they came out. If you notice, I've put a border, the uh, edge board or the edge rebate of the film on this one here. And I've done that because I've got some negative carriers that I filed down, or one, one that I filed down, I should say, and I sort of pretty much ruined it. Uh, this was years ago, but I still use it. But um, Tim Soderstrom is a patron of mine, uh, of the channel, and he said to me, I've got some um, uh, negative carriers for a Durst Enlarger. He said, I don't know if they'll fit yours. He said, let me know. Um, he makes his own 3D um, printed carriers and also filter holders for the Enlarger. And he sent me a couple of pictures. I said, you know what, Tim, it'd be great if you could do a few that, um, uh, you know, a cut off at the edges just so you could show the negative film rebate. And that's what he did. And he sent me a few various kinds. Now, Tim has got an eBay um, shop as well. So I'll put a link in the description there if you want to have a look at some of his stuff that he makes for us darkroom users. Um, it's 3D printed, but it works fine. It worked fine for me in this instance. So that's um, one of the leaves is there. And don't forget, guys, as normal, these will be going, all these six prints here will be going on my Etsy page uh, if you want to uh, support the channel and buy a print from me. Worldwide shipping. This was the another print or another negative that I liked in particular I just like the way that these trees were bending over and this one in the background here just sort of laying on the floor but it, the way I framed it was coming up diagonally to the top left of the print there you can see and there's only a very very slight cropping there I'll just crop the uh, the edge rebate out on that one so that's another nice uh, print I had to do a bit of burning up in the sky here and a little tiny bit of dodging down here but um, it all worked out really well and the last one I did I liked was a full shot full frame shot of the trees themselves you can see it there that I think that was the second shot that I took and again a little tiny bit of burning in the sky that I did just to give it a little bit more pizzazz if you like and I left the edge rebate in on that one as well so all these prints here will be going on my Etsy page guys if you want to purchase a print and support the channel they'll be signed and shipped wherever you are and as for my style of shooting photography getting lost in woods it seems to be um, quite a common thing for me do you know what happens I just end up walking away and getting so engrossed in what I'm doing I come off the path and I end up in the thick of the woods and then I just can't figure out which way to get back the last thing I want to do is walk all the way around the forest to get to my car so I was trying to find a short shortcut way back and I ended up going through barbed wire and and all the all the Amazon as I called it of the uh, of the of the woodland area but I had great fun and you know what even if the negatives didn't come out well maybe there might have been something wrong with the development or something wrong with the camera or whatever I still enjoy myself walking around the woods taking photographs and even the development process as well like I said if it didn't come out of negatives it wouldn't have bothered me really I would have been like oh well I had a great walk anyway and a good time so you know that's kind of my philosophy on photography sometimes but uh, as you can see the negatives did come out well got some nice prints so anyway guys I hope you enjoyed the video thanks as always for watching and subscribing to my channel liking and also getting involved with the comment section as well I do appreciate it and also to the supporters that support the channel on Patreon, YouTube members, and also everyone that buys a print from me. I really do appreciate your support. I'll catch you next time.